Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start by um, just going into, this is in Matthew 25. So if you want to follow along, um, you know where to go in your Bibles. I'm using the King James Version because it's the one that I have grown to trust. And I'm really not familiar with all the enough with all the other versions to recommend anything else at this point. Um, yeah, and I really, uh, just to avoid... Um, I would I would say don't use the passion or the um, the message or the uh, new century version. Those are the ones that I know for sure are not great versions because they basically um, change the word of God, um, and they they say they're paraphrasing it in today's language so you can make it easier to understand. If you want to get an NIV, go get an NIV. I don't think they're 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 not perfect, but they're not as bad as the ones I just mentioned. I don't think they're going to lead you into paganism. I'm using the King James um, because it's, like I said, the one that I've grown to trust. Okay, so I'm going to start in uh, Matthew chapter 25 in the very top at verse uh, 1. <laughs> then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. <clears throat> Excuse me. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept, and at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose, and they trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps have gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there not be enough for us and you, but go rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterwards came the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Jesus ends this by saying, Watch therefore, for you know, not, you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man comes. So he's likening this to his return, this wedding. Um, and the, the cool thing about this is, and, and you'll see it once you understand a little bit about the Jewish wedding, um, is that the, the groom would make a covenant with the bride's uh, family or with the bride and her family, um, a contract or a covenant. Um, and so at that point, the, the wedding is official. Okay, at that point when they sign this thing, excuse me. Uh, at that point, she was betrothed. She was considered as good as married. Okay, she can't change her mind now. She's already married, basically, even though they're not living together yet. So the way this works is he goes off to build a house, and the house for them that he's building is attached to the father's house, usually. Um, and while he's gone, she's preparing for the wedding. Everybody else is preparing, right? And um, they don't know when he's coming back. He can come back at any day. He can come back at any time of the day or night. Um, so that's why he said, you know, um, to watch or be on guard or keep your eyes open because neither you don't know the day or the hour when the Son of Man's coming, just like this wedding, okay? Um, now in the in the parable, ten, five of these virgins um, or women or whatever, maidens, whatever you want to call them, they didn't have enough oil so they weren't prepared in case he came at night. So he apparently did come at night because they needed their lamps. Um, this, I don't know that this is, you know, like the oil is necessarily symbolic of the Holy Spirit, like people say, because true believers have the Holy Spirit, okay? True believers have the Holy Spirit. But it does say something about being ready and being on guard, you know, being on guard to yourself to make sure that you're ready, that you're prepared for the return of the Lord. And a lot of that is going to have to do with you understanding the word of God and really making sure that you know his will. Um, so I'm going to read a little bit more to you in another uh, chapter. I'm going to go back to Matthew 22 um, because I want you to see there's some more stuff in here about um, this, this likening his return and stuff to a wedding. But in this case, he refers um, to a little bit more than just us. And so, but but what he does say about when he comes back um, is really important to understand as well. So uh, in Matthew chapter 22, Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables. And he said, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king, which made a marriage for his son. So again, he's likening 
um, his relationship with us um, to us being the bride, which he also did in the Old Testament. Um, this is something that was known by Old Testament um, believers, um, that they're the bride of God. Um, so he sent forth his servants to call those that were invited to the wedding or bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, he sent forth other servants saying, tell them that are bidden, behold, I've prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed and all things are ready, come to the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways, went to his farm, one went, another went to his merchandise. And the, remnant, the rest of them took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them or killed them. Um, when the king heard of it, he was angry and he sent forth his armies. I'm just kind of paraphrasing now. Uh, it's just because it'll be easier for you to understand if I don't speak in King James, right? Um, so he was angry and he sent forth his armies and destroyed the murderers and burned up their city. Now, what's he talking about here? Well, what he's talking about here is the prophets that he sent to his people over and over and over again. And instead of listening to them and getting ready to be joined to their king, to their God, um, they would beat up the prophets and some they even killed. And then God came and destroyed their city. And that is, um, he burned up their city. And per personally, I believe that that's a reference to what happened in 70 AD, not necessarily the stuff that happened in times before that, though it could apply to all of them really, because he, he destroyed their cities and exiled them, though I don't know if they got burned up in the past, uh, you know, like when Babylon defeated them or what. But anyway, so... Um, then he says to his servants again, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden or were invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the highways and as many as you shall find bid or invite to the marriage. So the servants went out to the highways and gathered together as many as they found both good and bad, both good and bad. And the wedding was furnished with guests. When the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man that did not have on a wedding garment. Now you can think of the wedding garments, you know, in Revelation, it talks about how God has given um, us the, the linen garments, which are the righteousness of the saints. Um, and we're also supposed to be clothed with Christ, right? We're supposed to put off the old man, our old sinful self, and put on Jesus Christ and walk in his ways. Uh, so anyway, um, he sees a man that doesn't have on that, that righteousness. He doesn't have on that wedding garment, right? And he said to him, friend, how did you come in here not having a wedding garment? And the man was speechless. Um, then said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many are called, but few are chosen. So we're all called, we're all invited, right? And we're answering the call. This guy in here, he answered that call, right? But here's the problem. This guy didn't know what he was supposed to do. He didn't know the word of God. He didn't know the will of God. So apparently he thought that the invitation was enough. And you know, there's a lot of people that think that these days because their preachers are just giving them a prayer to receive Jesus, you know, receive Jesus. And they don't tell them anything about um, repentance or, you know, receiving forgiveness for their sins or anything. They just pray a prayer to ask Jesus into your heart. There's no biblical precedent for that. Um, that's not how it works. Um, so anyway, um, and you don't want to just speak a prayer into the air either. You want to tell God that you believe in him, that you believe in his son um, and the sacrifice he made on your behalf. Ask God to forgive your sins, to cleanse you, to make you his child, and to help you to be the kind of person he wants you to be. And while you're at it, you should go ahead and ask him to fill you with his spirit. So anyway, um, these people think that they're going to heaven because they don't know the will of God. They don't know what God requires of them. And I do want to go into that in another passage. Um, we want to talk about, you know, um, what what Jesus had to say about that. There's because there's more. Um, but it's a little too long to go into right now. But anyway, um I wanna I wanna look at the fact that um he was also he was cast into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus used that reference in other cases to indicate um, basically outside of his kingdom, okay? Outside of the kingdom of God, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Gnashing of teeth is like, it indicates like anger in some ways. Um, like they, they kind of vacillate back and forth, I guess, between being really super grieved and upset because, you know, hey, look at what I'm missing. Um, and then the other side of it is, is an anger and a rage, I guess. Um, so yikes. 
we don't want to find ourselves in that situation, right? So let's make sure we know the will of God. And this is why it's super important to continue in the words of God, continue in the Bible, but make sure you've got a good Bible. Um, I use the King James. Like I said, it's the one I've grown to trust. I will not use one of those false Bibles because they make people think um, and, and, you know, I know there's pastors that use the message, guys, what are you doing? I mean, are you just not reading it enough to recognize? Because there's a part in there where it says, calls God the God of green hope. The what? That's not in the Bible. Where did that come from? <laughs> and then it has as above, so below in the Lord's Prayer. That's a witchcraft phrase. I mean, come on, guys. That's like pagan belief right there. And I'm sorry, but nobody can tell me that guy didn't know what he was doing. I don't believe it. I do not believe it for a second. Remember that there are false workers out there, right? Deceitful workers, he calls them. Deceitful workers who pose as Christians even, who, who are wolves in sheep's clothing, who want to come inside the church and slaughter the sheep, right? Well, that's how they do it. Fake Bibles, fake conferences, you know, um, fake dreams, fake visions, because people love that stuff. I mean, I, there's real visions and dreams that we, you know, sometimes God gives to his people. But these people, there's another part in the scriptures where it talks about how with molded words, they, you know, they use molded or plastic. The word is like plastos, I believe. Molded words. They mold their words to make you think certain things are true in order to lead you astray. Um, it's it's crazy the amount of deception, but it's always been with us. It's nothing new. Anyway, so you really want to make sure you know the Word of God. And to do that, I recommend personally the King James Version. I'm sure that NIV is okay. It's not the best as far as I'm concerned, because when you start relegating the received text and putting parts of it into the margins as if you're casting doubt on them, yeah, I don't, that doesn't sit well with me. Um, the King James is not perfect. It calls Passover in one place Easter because the the reformers really didn't catch everything. You guys, they caught a they caught some corruption, and they knew because of that corruption, we needed to return to the Word of God, and the people needed the Word of God in their own language so that they could continue in the words of Jesus and stuff, and you know, to read not just the words of Jesus, the whole Bible. Okay, um, but they didn't catch everything. And so we need to get our understanding from the Word of God and not from just, not just preachers and teachers. And when you get it from preachers and teachers, you need to be good Bereans. Remember, Paul um, commended the Bereans for, for their nobility because every time he preached to them, they would search the scriptures to see if what he said was true. He said he searched the scriptures daily to see if what he was saying to them was true. They, they wanted to know for sure. They didn't want to be deceived. And I, I hope that you don't want to be deceived either. I'm pretty sure you don't, right? Um, anyway, so I hope that that helps you understand a little bit more about the need to be ready. And then um, based on this guy, you know, thinking he's going to be a wedding guest and then getting kicked out of the kingdom, um, that you realize that not everybody who thinks they're going to heaven is. So we know from that that there's something wrong. Um and, and we, you know, obviously we have to understand God's word in order to make sure we do know what we're supposed to be doing and, and what God expects of us, right? I hope that this was helpful for you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them. This will probably be on Rumble and on Facebook and both places, of course, there's places to leave your comments. So I will do my best to answer them. God bless you guys. Love you. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.